Hello, faithful. This is a cart talk with our hunter, Mitch. Uh, so, Mitch, I have to ask as a fellow Pac-12 person, whoa, did you press that? <laughs> did uh, <you> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to keep you at a safe pace here. Um, how happy are you that Utah won the Pac-12 championship? Uh, do you follow college football stuff? I do a little bit. Okay. I, I follow Utah. A lot of my mates that I played with are gone, but there, there's uh, still a couple. But uh, yeah, happy to beat USC. You were just saying you were watching the World Cup. So do you have a team you're rooting for now? Uh, I think just good games. I normally go for the underdog, but that means, you know, the semis and quarters are going yeah. to be a bit of a mismatch. So maybe Brazil, France. Okay, those are good ones. Yeah. Do you have a, I really enjoyed the knockout of Morocco and Spain. Yeah. Uh, the kind of switch up there, nobody expected. Do you have a favorite game that you've seen so far? Um, it's, they're in the morning. So it's like, <laughs> I see early. bits in between meetings oh, and bits in between meetings and stuff like that. But um, maybe well, when Australia beat Denmark. Okay. Um, that was probably my favorite. And then anything with a lot of goals. So like France and Mbappe is good to watch. Uh, Brazil is good to watch. I was about to say, didn't Portugal have five goals? That's in true. Yeah. <laughs> that was a... Uh... Ronaldo got benched and his, and, uh, his replacement got a hat trick. <laughs> yep, something like that. I did see that. All right, Mitch. So I was looking up some stats and fun facts about you. I think a story that a lot of people don't know are, is the story of the birth of your daughter last season. Yeah. That crazy turnaround that you had to make it in time for the Chicago game. Do you want to talk about that? Yeah. Um, I think Maddie's due date was on like Sunday, like the, the game in Chicago. So the plan was to be induced uh, at the start of the week, but it was like a crazy busy week and we got pushed to Friday. And it was sort of like, oh, do we do it? Do we hopefully hold off and wait? And uh, we we did it on the Friday. And I think Bowie came uh, Saturday night. So the team had already gone. All of the uh, commercial flights had left, but um, I got a flight, I think it was like two or three in the morning. I don't know where. I went home and got like two hours sleep. I can't really remember, but it, I, I think it was San Jose. Okay. And two then land, the morning. The yeah, pace. landed at maybe like eight or nine in Chicago. And then I was reading you didn't even have to punt in that game. No, I was so <laughs> tired, and I think it was it was a pretty windy, horrible conditions, and um, yeah, my body felt terrible, and I got there and. Uh, yeah, no punts, just a few holes. Where does that rank in memorable games throughout your career, just because of the the beforehand being so crazy? I think it's all a bit of a blur. I don't <laughs> remember too much from the game, but I was pretty ecstatic that you know I jumped on a private jet, got to see it's Bowie, got to see uh, Bowie be born, and uh, then I just sort of was a spectator, a few holes, and yeah. watched the boys win. Other than obviously you were born in Australia, yeah. went to school in Utah, now live in California. Do you have a favorite state? Are you partial to California now? Or are you still kind of miss Utah? Uh, I've got a favorite state and it is 100% California. How in the bloody hell are you? Oh, hello. <laughs> Special <Sorry>. surprise. <laughs> I love Mitch. <laughs> Oh, that's good. I'm, I'm a California person. Yeah, too, so. California for sure. Utah's <laughs> too cold. Okay, so not not a mountain sport kind of guy. Uh, I do like the mountains, but I just like the beach a lot better. Yeah, I mean, I think I think that's fair. <laughs> um, what do you think about George Kittle, the guy who just hopped in the back of this <laughs> golf cart? George is a legend. He's the same person that every like everybody else sees. That's that's him all the time. Great boy. How much interaction do you guys get with the rest of the team? Obviously, they're special teams periods, but it looks like you three, the specialists, kind of hang out on your own most of the time. Yeah, those guys are doing all of the heavy lifting and all of <laughs> the, the heavy hitting. And uh, we might see some of the other tight ends because they're on like punt and stuff. 
but George is a social, loud guy, so you, you see him in the locker room when he's in there. Specialists, I think all, you guys all have great personalities. Can you walk me through that room? We've done a card talk with Tabor, so we've definitely got a taste of it. Yeah, Tabor is uh, like an ex like a centric sort of uh, uh, loud. Uh, Robbie's more sort of quiet. Well, not quiet, but more to himself, like twenty year pro. Yeah, that makes uh, sense. Does awesome. his film, and he do, like he's he's got his routine, and he's uh, yeah, just a pro. Fill us in on what it's like to be a core member of special teams. What is the most underrated part of your job or maybe something that people don't realize that you're responsible for during a game? Um, I would say not so, maybe not so much anymore, but like as a punter, you're, you're the holder. And uh, when I it was when I first got to Utah, that almost stressed me out more than punting. It was like, really? yeah. Uh, sort of the kickers depending on you and stuff like that so for me especially at first starting to play American football it was uh, yeah holding was a pretty stressful job for me at the start but now uh, kind of like riding a bike yeah now <laughs> I, I I feel like I've sort of got it under control what first piqued your interest in American football uh, I always I always uh, had seen like a sh professional Australian football players, so like they had already had careers in AFL, uh, come over and sort of have a crack at NFL, and uh, always thought, oh, like I'd be good at that. I was never the, like the most well conditioned as far as like running far. I always had a strong leg, and I was like, I didn't never really knew how to sort of get into it, but I was like, if I if I had a shot at this, I reckon I'd be pretty good. So. Turns um, out you were right. <laughs> yeah, um, my coach Nathan Chapman started Pro Kick Australia, and it sort of gave guys like me, just someone who wasn't a pro, just a, a tradie back in Australia, gave them a chance to uh, come over and play college football and give it a crack. So I got in contact with him, and that's sort of when it all started. But I always had a, a thought like, if I could yeah, have a do. crack, I reckon I'd be all right. All right, so Mitch, as we close out our ride here, what do you need from the faithful come Sunday? Uh, I guess just be loud and be there for the boys. Do what you always do, faithful. That's a wrap from us.